Welcome. Hey, Samara. How are you? Good to see you. Welcome, y'all. My southern <laughs> accent has definitely come back around. So I am Terry. And so I offer spiritual upgrades for the modern day woman to help them really own their power, be strong in what they're doing, know their spirit, make better decisions by trusting their inner guidance, and really feel empowered in their life kind of get that edge up, right? Really know what they're doing and help them to find that path for them. I'm also the host of the podcast, which I love, The Empowered Spirit Show, which helps you to navigate your life and listening to all the different ways that we can do that, bringing on spiritual authors. I really love talking to new spiritual authors. I'm also the author of the book, Confessions of a Shower Tapper, The Ultimate Guide to Living Your Life with EFT. I confess to tapping in the shower. What a great modality. So thank you guys for showing up for here and for anybody that is listening later. I know that holidays can be challenging. I know that for me, it has a very big imprint in my life that I've worked to overcome. And I know all I really kind of want to do during the holidays is just kind of have that relaxing, warm, loving. I love Hallmark. I'm a Hallmark movie person. And I really kind of want that feeling for myself. But many times it's not always that way. And so I just kind of ask you for yourself, what is your dream for your holiday? How would you like to feel? That's what I really would like to ask. And what I'd like to do is just kind of open up with that visualization, connecting spirit to spirit, because that is the work that I do and taking the time to really bring that vision in for you. So let's just do that. Let's take a moment. I'm going to light a little sage. If you have sage and would like to light some, you can. Otherwise, I'm going to light it for all of us. And just take a moment and close your eyes. And just take a nice deep inhale and exhale. And just calling in your higher self. And as you call in your higher self, Feel your spirit, feel that alignment coming in for you, pulling in your spiritual body and align with spirit, creator, the masters, the teachers, all the energy that is around us right now. As you open up to visualize your holidays and just see yourself joyous, peaceful, stress-free, bringing in the love of those new babies, the love of your family. See your beautiful table set. Gratitude for all the many blessings. Peace prevailing all around. Releasing the worries, doubts, the fears, stress. And just see yourself floating through the season with gratitude in your heart for all your many blessings. Gratitude for life, for love, for our world. May peace prevail. Taking another deep inhale. And exhale. And whatever else you'd like to set that intention for you. Doing that now. Sending it out into the universe, elevating those emotions and let them just radiate all around. Taking another deep inhale and exhale. 
Sending the breath all the way down deep into Mother Earth. Allow yourself to bring the awareness back. Noticing a shift coming back. All right, we'll hold those intentions as we talk a little bit about the holidays. I was watching the other night, something came up on Netflix. It was like home holidays or something. And they had one of the main characters, the main character, she was like in her 30s, sitting at the children's table because she was single. And all through the parents and the mother was like giving her grief. Why aren't you with somebody? Why aren't you there? Why aren't you married? And everybody's staring at her. And lots of times that can happen <laughs> when we get into the holidays. We can have a lot of judgments. And maybe it's not over being single. Maybe it's for the work that you do. Or maybe it's for quitting that job, right? Or having a spiritual practice and people thinking you should be doing other things. And lots of times we get lots of judgments going on. And then it tends to make us not show up for who we are. Especially as empaths, we tend to take in all that sensitivity around us. And then it's a little hard to decipher how we're really feeling because we're so worried about everybody else. And then we don't know exactly where we are. And then we get ungrounded. And then we kind of wonder like, okay, what was I really all about anyway when I came in, right? And sometimes our family can be very encouraging and sometimes it can be very challenging. And then we also have friends too. I mean, sometimes our friends can like have that jealousy going on or all those energies too that, what are you doing? Why aren't you going out? All of that energy can come back around. So it can really be challenging time of year. And especially if we aren't really aware of our energy body, it really is. And then we have all the other things going on too. All the things that we have to do, all the people pleasing, like Debbie, you were talking about, all the things that we should be doing, all the extra cooking. For me, it's the extra eating. All right, I'm an emotional eater. I've talked about it year after year. I talk about it in my book that I am an emotional eater. And I've had to really get a grip on that. And the holidays can be a really great time to do a lot of that emotional eating, especially when we don't want to show up, right? Especially when we don't want to deal with some of those intense feelings. So my story, as I kind of mentioned in the beginning, it began in the late 90s. It began with my husband at the time coming back. He had been traveling and came back and finally admitted he was having an affair. And that was like November 1st. And it was like, oh my gosh. And I trusted him. I thought he was my soulmate. And I was pretty crushed. But all from there, from November all the way through Thanksgiving, Christmas, it was one of the worst holidays ever. It really was. It, I was just stressed. I was upset. I didn't know what I was going to do. Panic attacks. It was horrible. It was horrible. He was drinking a lot. And every time that cabinet would open, I would just cringe. And it was just a really hard time. And then I will say I did make it through, thank goodness, lots of help, lots of counseling, lots of spiritual teachers that really helped me along my path. But the thing that happened is every year, the same time, the energy would start to come back. That energy would just come back up. And in the beginning, those first years or two, I got right back into the energy. All that sensitivity would come back around. And then I started making up stories about it. And then I started not showing up for the holidays. I started not taking on invitations and really hiding. And that's when all that eating again would come back. It seemed like easier just to be comfortable in the house and eating and not doing anything. And it was a really hard time for me until I started learning about my energy body, until I started really understanding that as an empath, this is what can happen. And if we don't start to really work with releasing that excess emotions, we'll tend to pick up the same emotions over and over and over. And then what we tend to do is make imprints upon imprints, right? The thing is, and this is really important, the ego cannot tell the difference between past or present. Really important point. So when we're having anything that's around, for me, it was like the the, the rejection, the abandonment, the betrayal, any of that not good enough energy, anything I would like that at all, the ego comes up to protect us. And so I thought I was right back in the same situation. And that's what happens with impasse as well. We get so sensitive, our body pulls in all these emotions and we don't know how to deal with it because we can't tell past from present. And so that's why we want to start really deciphering what is it going on? Have you guys noticed that? Let me know in the comments, maybe if you've noticed that Imprints really come around big time and then you're back to where you were. Really big, important thing that can happen. So I began to realize that I needed to let this go. I needed to find the tools that could help me move through this 
and then start to create a different way of dealing with the holidays. It was really hard for me at first. The first year my kids weren't with me, that was really hard. I didn't know how to deal with it. And I got really upset and really emotional. But finally, I started to really realize that we do have the ability to make the changes that we want. The brain can rewire, right? Neuroplasticity is showing us that we can make changes. It is possible. Do you guys believe that? That's something you've thought about, right? Got a few handshakes on that? Yes, for sure. Right, so I do believe that we can with awareness and because I work with the subtle energy body, right, we can make these changes energetically. And I'll admit, I was in a lot of mental therapy, mental counseling and just crying, 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 but it wasn't until I started working with the energy body that I start to actually get to the root of what was going on. And once I began to get to the root of what's going on, that's where I started noticing healing was occurring right? I didn't even know I was an empath. I didn't even know I was married to a narcissistic man. <laughs> I do now. <laughs> I do now. I can tell you that, right? So empath is, empath right now is one of the things everybody seems to be talking about. Even the, the therapist, everybody seems to be talking about it. And for good reason, because we need empathy in the world. We do, but we need to have empaths really understand how they can use this to the best of their abilities. All right, so let's jump into some of the lessons. And I wanna talk a little bit too about like what my clients are finding out. And one of my favorite stories is with Kylie. She's really great. She was one of my high school, uh, college students and she was very shy in her family. She had a large family. It was two families put together, right? And she would always tend to hide in her room. She was very sensitive. She'd pick this up, pick up everybody's emotions and she didn't know what to do. And she would get in trouble. <laughs> why are you hiding in your room? Not only was she unhappy around crowds, but she was also hiding in her room. And so she texted me not too long ago going, oh my gosh, these energy boundary techniques that you're teaching me have saved my life. I use the bubble. This is what she's saying. I use the bubble and believe it or not, it works. I'm like, okay, I do believe it because I taught you. I had the best night and my parents were super surprised that I was out socializing. So it was like a great tool that we can use for ourselves and then be out in the world rather than staying inside. All right. So that's one of the things that's really, really important. Then I had another client, Harmony, who talked about using the breath techniques and really able to ground. She's like, it's the best calm I've ever had, even through my yoga training. Grounding her energy was super important. And she's going through a major divorce herself right? So these are some of the techniques that we can work with because it becomes really hard living in the normal world as empath and super sensitives, right? I'm assuming you guys are all empaths. You know this about yourself, right? Or learning about it for yourself. So one of the first techniques that I really want to work with is grounding, all right? When we ground our energy, it helps us in so many ways. It helps us from feeling overwhelmed. It helps us from getting too out of our body. And that's really important as impasse because what happens is our energy field becomes so wide open that we take in everything, all right? There's unseen and seen energies out there, all right? So even if you can't see it as an empath, we are so wide open that we're pulling everything in. And many times we don't even know where we're pulling it in. And as I mentioned before, if you have stress, the, the body just starts to see stress. The chakras just start to see stress and starts to pull it in. And you may not even be aware of where it's coming, but then you're loaded down with all of these emotions, right? Like Kylie was talking about, she just has them. She doesn't know what's wrong. And all she wants to do is hide, right? And I've had some of my other clients talk about all they want to do is hide in the bed because they just can't deal with it. It becomes really hard and then you miss the whole season and then you're not happy and then everybody's ragging on you because you haven't shown up. So when we ground, there are many techniques, but the one that I really like to work with is two parts because the other aspect of this is that in our second chakra, so grounding's our first chakra, right? We're gonna practice this in a second. And then in our second chakra, that's where we tend to hold on to all those intense, emotions from our family, from those that are close to us. And so our second chakra becomes very loaded down with energy as well, unwanted emotions. So one of the ways that we can do this as we ground and balance out all of that 
excess nervousness, excess emotional energy. And the second chakra is creativity. And right now through the holidays is a great time to open up to your creative abilities. Crafting, I know people go crafting, what good is that? But the truth is, especially as sensitive people, emotional people, healers, energy workers, in our hands is a lot of neuro pathways, a lot of nerves. And when we craft, it helps the conditioning of the nerves. It helps you to calm down. So when we begin this, this practice of grounding our energy, we can begin to connect, center our energy. And then as we bring up fresh energy, we can open up the second chakra and use our creative forces to help us move through. And now, especially this year, because of COVID and the pandemic and can't really travel as much or can't get out as much, we might have extra time on our hands. So finding the ability to be grounded and do some creative work, maybe it's make your own cards, maybe it's decorate a table, maybe it's just finding ways to work with things. I'm a beater, I'm a jeweler, I love to make stuff. I make a lot of shaman tools and stuff. And for me, it really helps me come back into the body, which is also grounding. All right. So let me know if you guys like to craft. Let me know if that's a part of you, a creative energy. You can put it in the chat if you want to. Let me know how you think about that. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to use what I call a grounding cord to help us connect with the universe to help us ground our energy center and feel that connection, all right? So what we wanna do is we want to imagine what I like to call like a grounding cord. Imagine it right at the base of the spine and we're gonna drop this grounding cord using our imagination right into the earth, all right? So just for a moment, close your eyes. And imagine this grounding cord connecting all the way down deep into the earth. And just imagine it spreading out almost like the roots of a tree. You can imagine that if that works a little better. And as you exhale, releasing that stress of the holidays, the overwhelm, the sadness that may come in, and imagine it leaving the body. Energy follows intention. Intend to release whatever it is you're feeling, even right now. Sending it down through the grounding cord, deep into the earth. And as you breathe back up from the earth, Bring that energy into the first chakra. Let it circulate with the breath. And then as you exhale, send it back down through the legs and the feet deep into the earth. Inhale again. Bring it up through the feet, through the legs, into that first chakra with that red fire, transforming the energy. And as you exhale, just imagine, pretend, visualize it, all that excess energy going down into the earth, grounding and centering for you. Take another deep inhale, breathing up that fresh prana through the feet and the legs into that first chakra. Let it swirl around. And as you exhale, releasing anything at all, it keeps you from grounding with Mother Earth. Good, and now we're gonna take it a step further. We're gonna imagine that we have this beautiful scrub brush and we're gonna really scrub that grounding cord, make it nice and squeaky clean. Imagine yourself just scrubbing all the excess energy, all the things that get stuck there. So you have a nice and shiny grounding cord. Let it be beautiful colors, sparkling clean. Just imagine it cleaning away any of that debris, any of those excess energies or emotions that may have stuck on it as you were letting it go. Spirit loves amusement. So just amuse yourself cleaning the grounding cord. Let it be nice and sparkly. And then just release that 
brush, let it go and feel that sparkle. Feel that aliveness coming forward. Now, as you take that next inhale, bring it up through the feet and the legs, through the first chakra, see that red light, and then continue up into the second chakra now. And let the colors become orange, passion, fire, desire. This is your creativity. Let it help to balance out. And then exhale back down through the first chakra, the legs and the feet deep into the earth. And as you take another inhale, bring the breath up, this time through the feet and the legs, the first chakra into the second. Now moving it up through the third, all the way up the body, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh chakra, out the crown. Let all this energy refresh now. And then exhale, sending it all the way back down, deep into the earth. Inhaling up the body, refreshing the whole energy field, the whole energy system. And exhale, sending it back down deep into the earth. Feel the chakras coming alive with each breath that you take. Inhaling and exhaling. Good. And then just start to feel yourself. Notice if you've shifted a little bit. Notice if you feel grounded now. And then as you're ready, just blink in the eyes, back open. Coming back. How are we doing? Comments? I think you guys are muted. I love the idea of scrubbing. Right? Yeah, it made yeah. a real difference. It's more sparkle, more aliveness. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Good. Yay. Definitely. And then you can do this when you go to make your crafts or you go to sit down and do something creative. This doesn't have to be crafts, but to me, I just find that that's a great way to balance the energy, especially this time of year, right? It's like my daughter and I, we're planning, I won't be able to see my kids this year. First time, like 16 years, we're planning on like doing gingerbread houses, yep. right? And so we're going to do it on Zoom. But when we do it, we're going to be conscious about it. So taking those few minutes to ground your energy, bring that breath up, that can enliven all of that energy for you and it can calm down the nervous system. Definitely. I was working with one of my teachers about two weeks ago. He's a shaman. He's been working with me together. And, and he's like, your hands, your hands, you must have that creative energy flowing. And I had gotten busy and had not really sat down at my jewelry table in a while. And I thought, wow, he's so true. I have not done it. But there is something to be said about using the hands, especially even like as a Reiki healer, Debbie, you were talking like it's really important that we find the ways to work with that energy that can help us calm the nervous system down. Definitely. And there's so many things this time of year that we can craft, but having the consciousness for it, like being really aware of what we're doing, not just mindlessly moving through things can make a difference as well. Definitely. Yeah. And my daughter and I too, we do vision boards. So we've already got our vision board set up between Christmas it. and New Year's to do that as well, right? So there's so many things that we can do rather than really focusing on what we can't do, right? And I know human nature, the tendency is to focus on what we can't, right? But really having that conscious awareness to choose things that we can and find the gratitude is going to make a big difference as well, for sure, definitely. So that's the first thing I like to start with is the grounding exercise. And then I like to move into the energetic boundaries because this is so important as an empath. All right, just like we have the chakras, we have our auric field. And what most empaths that I've worked with don't understand is that they have an energy body that's wide open. And generally this happens from a very young age. All right, you're from that ages of two to seven, we have a lot of imprints that come in. And so especially if you have like a troublesome family, if you have like an abusive parent or a sibling or somebody that picks on you all the time, the tendency is to keep the energy body open because you're always searching. Am I safe? Am I okay? And when you keep that energy body open, you don't realize how much energy you're pulling in. I think I read an article with where we only process about 1% of the energy around us. 
So what's going on with that other 99%, right? It makes it really hard to understand all of that energy and where all of that energy is coming from. Definitely. So when we begin to recognize our energy boundaries, we can start to really filter out and control. So one of the fun ones that I taught and Kylie was talking about that I was talking about earlier was the energetic bubble. We can put a bubble around us and pretend like a, it's like a energy faculty imagining a bubble. So energy doesn't come at us. Right. I use this all the time for when I travel through the airports, right? When I don't want to be seen, when I'm moving through the malls, although nobody's been in the malls lately, at least I haven't, right? But we can put an energy bubble around us, which is exactly what Connie was talking about. And then we're not taking in the energy. And that is really, really important. And that's really only one of the energy of boundary techniques because we can't always go in a bubble. We're caring people, right? And we want to have sometimes energy coming in. We want to know. And sometimes we want to reflect energy back to the person pushing it on us. But the energy bubble is really fun. So let's just practice this for a moment. So again, if you can, just maybe close your eyes. Feel the energy all around us right now. Because even through Zoom, we take on tons of energy. And now just imagine an energy bubble. See yourself surrounded in this energy bubble and know how that feels. And being that it's the holidays, let's have a little amusement. Make it sparkly. Make it full of glitter if you want. Have this be your energy bubble for the holiday. And then just start to notice. How does that feel? And now just release it. Let it go. Come back. Being in the Zoom room. And now do it again. Imagine this bubble all around you. Make it nice and sparkly for the holidays. This is your holiday bubble. So now when people are going, why aren't you married? What is your job? What are you doing? Who'd you vote for? All of that energy can just float around you instead of coming at you. And as an empath, we won't take it on. It'll just be around the room. So release the bubble. And again, bring the bubble back in. It's a subtle difference, but that's what we're working with, the subtle energy body. As empaths, as, impasse, as intuitives, we have to have these defenses for us. We have to learn to work with the subtle bodies. Otherwise, we take in energy all over the place. It drains us. We become an energy sponge. How many people have been called an energy sponge? I have. <laughs> I've started actually cleaning my sponge, getting rid of my sponge in the kitchen sink more often, just as a physical reminder to do that for myself. Kind of funny, but it actually works. Yeah. All right, so the energy bubble, how was that? How did that feel? Interesting, right? Yes, I actually did that when I had, a, I had hip surgery. My girlfriend, I was getting really apprehensive and I went in with my daughter and she was trying to be strong and I was trying to be strong and I just wanted to let go and cry. And mm. so we had that whole thing going on. And my girlfriend happened to call and say, put yourself in a bubble. And I felt a hundred percent better after I did yeah. that. So it yeah. really yeah. did work. And, and I'm glad that you reminded me because for some reason, I've never even thought about that. It's like a little tool that you have that you don't always think about. Excellent. Yes, Debbie, that's yeah. so true. Yeah, so it is. And in the hospital too, my mother was in the hospital many times. And so that was a great tool for me too, walking through the halls, especially now with COVID, right? It's just like using this energy bubble whenever you go out, even to the grocery store. It's another way of doing it because everybody's going to be in there shopping, right? And so it's like, just put your energy bubble when you go out. And that's also going to going to really protect your immune system. I was on the podcast um, two weeks ago, I think it was with Cindy Dale, who's well known for her subtle energy work, a well-known author with Llewellyn and her latest book was Stress, Trauma and Chronic Illness. And so on the, on the podcast, we were talking about it. She actually has a meditation for fighting COVID to keep your immune system strong. It's a free gift that she offered on her site, but it was one of the things we were talking about, like when you go into situations like the grocery store, that's about all the places I go these days, right? Like it's really important that we do put the bubble around us so we're not picking up all of that fear and overwhelm and the COVID viruses to keep our system strong. 
And so the same thing for when we're in our social situations, you know, like, like the stores and like everything else, that's what's really is. Sorry, I was late. Hi, Vanessa, no problems. It seems like I ought to be running late tonight. This isn't new to me. How should one feel in this energy bubble? I think one should feel, I don't think there's any shoulds, but I do feel that being in an energy bubble will help you feel a little quieter. It's going to feel a little bit more contained because as an empath, all right, as someone that is super sensitive, we tend to pull energy in and embody it as if I'm, it's our own. So when we're in this energy bubble, we're not taking in excess energy. Chances are you'll feel your energy more and your own emotions more. So for instance, you're going to a party or going to your families and you're all like up and bubbly and happy. You get into there and at the table, people start talking and they start judging. And all of a sudden you find that your energy is dropped. Or all of a sudden you feel all the anxiety from everybody around or all the nervousness. Sometimes families produce nervousness. It just is, right? But in the energy bubble, then you're going to find that you're much more protected and you can stay in your own energy and show up as who you are. All too often at the hall. What's that? So what is that? It, it's help. I'm asking these questions because it's helpful in terms of utilizing these techniques. So that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, I understand. So how does that how does that manifest itself? Like, does that mean in this bubble you are silent? No. It you know, means- like for instance. Like you, you, you used the example of, uh, you know, being bombarded with questions, um, you know. It's more um, about the energy le- level, the energy layer, the auric field. So you're pulling your energy to be contained in this energy bubble. It's not that you're silent and it's not that you're in not interacting. It's just that the auric field isn't pulling in. As an empath, our chakras, our energy field pulls in other people's emotions. So it's just a way for you, especially if you have the sensitivity and then you're constantly being that energy sponge. This is great for somebody that is an energy sponge, meaning they're picking up everybody's energy. But you're still going to be able to interact and social and drink or eat or whatever your operating mode is, right? You're still going to be able to do that. This is projecting, this is protecting your energetic boundaries. So when we work with this, it's like the subtle field, the subtle layers around us. So I don't know if you're familiar with the chakras. I don't know how new you are to this work, but we have chakras and then we have auric fields. So when we're an empath, our auric field is wide open, we pull in. So as a bubble becomes around us, we're more protected from pulling in excess energy. Does that answer your question? Um, you know, yeah, perhaps. I'm just going to continue to listen and um, sure. you know, receive, receive the information. Excellent. Yeah. Because Did I you think- ever see that game that you put like that big plastic all around you like that um, and you bounce off each other, you roll around and stuff? That's what I envision. Yeah. That's what oh, yeah, I the, envision like every time I, yeah, yeah I, I, and you can bounce against each other and stuff, you know, that's how I envision it. It's just a protective layer where everything bounces off. So I'm not pulling it in. Yeah. And I it's think that's the that important part is not to pull it in. That's really yeah. where we're going with this. So that you can be social and you can be out there and be a part of the conversation. But what we don't want to do is impasse, because again, this is about impasse, is take in the excess fear, worry, and stress. Because all of that is an energy form. So if you're already feeling a little bit stressed and you're not aware of your energy field, you're going to pull in all the other stress in the room. That's how the chakras work. Like attracts like, especially if you're overloaded with that particular, could be stress, anxiety, fear, sadness, right? Any of those feelings. I think as I was kind of talking about in the beginning, when I first started this work, my sadness started because I was going through this horrible breakup in my marriage. So every year, any sadness I'd latch onto and started pulling in all that excess sadness. And then there was a point where like, there really wasn't any reason for me to be sad anymore until I started learning about my energy body. And so that's the reason we want to do the bubbles. I find it good for traveling. I find it good for protection of energy. 
And it's not like you're just going to go around and be numb to the world. You're still going to be out there, but you're going to have this energetic boundary that's going to help you at the subtle level. Most of us aren't familiar with the subtle level unless we study about it, but we have seen and unseen energy, right? So even though we might be sitting across from someone talking, there's all those energy cords, energetic cords that are coming at us, right? And that's just how we process energy. That's just how the, the, the energetic fields work around us. And so one of the things is impasse is knowing how we process energy. Do you guys know how you process your energy? That's a big key for a lot of people is how do I process my energy, right? That's one of the things I teach is really knowing because once you start to know how you process your energy, then you start to train your intuitive abilities. We have to separate out the difference between empath and intuitive. Otherwise, we become an open field of energy and we just take in way too much energy. It's hard to trust our intuition because we take in so much energy and we're not sure where it's coming from. And as intuitives, we really want to be strong and trust that inner guidance. But if we take in too much energy and we have all this excess emotional energy flying around, we don't know where it's coming from. And the harder part, which is kind of leading me to my third point of this, my third step for these tools, is that when we try to process other people's energy and it's not our own, it's much harder. It's much harder to get it out of the system. That's why we want to use these tools. So for me, as I talked about in the beginning, one of the things that I have trouble with is emotional eating. <laughs> I'm an emotional eater. And for a long time, I didn't know it. All my childhood, I talk about this in my book, all the childhood I grew up, I was the quote unquote fat child, only one in my family that had the weight problem. I went to a fat doctor, my brother teased me. And lo and behold, it was all related to emotional eating. Instead of dealing with the emotions, I like to eat. Now, I still like to eat. <laughs> I'm much better at it. I do have an issue with cookies. <laughs> In fact, my boyfriend was saying the other day, God, I never knew you had a sweet tooth. I was like, oh, I love pecan pies. Oh, I love these cookies. And I'm like, yeah, because if I didn't, I'd be twice the size, right? And so emotional eating at the holidays is very common. A lot of my clients come back into me to work with me at this time because they're just really stuffing their emotions with food. And that becomes very hard. So one of the techniques that I work with is the tapping, emotional freedom technique. So even just right here at the karate chop point, are you guys familiar with emotional freedom technique? Works on the amygdala of the brain, lowers the cortisol, helps with overwhelm, stress, anxiety, helps with tons of things. But I have found during the holidays, especially, it helps for overeating. It helps us to get to what are we feeling? Right, so a lot of times I chat, I tap right here. Okay, Tara, you've had a few extra cookies. What's going on? And then what happens is I acknowledge, I acknowledge the fact that I'm overeating. I acknowledge the fact that I have some emotions. And what that does is it tells the ego that it's okay, because what tends to happen, and what a lot of my clients will experience, is that they shame themselves. Ooh, I ate too much. I'm really bad. Why did I do this? Now, what does shame do? Shame is a low vibration. On the scale of consciousness, shame is a low vibration and it perpetuates the habit. It perpetuates the action, the, the, the addiction, so to speak. So when we're in this situation, it's like, okay, I'll tap a little bit. I know I've had these cookies. Thank you. I'll even say thank you, Terry, for having these cookies. Now we can stop. We don't have to eat the whole bag. All right because that's going to just drain you of energy too. Then you're not going to feel good. Then you're going to feel worse. Then your clothes aren't going to fit. All that, all that just keeps going on and on. But when we tap right here, right here at the karate chop point that gets us really into the subconscious mind, it starts to work on the amygdala. Amygdala is where we hold the cortisol, right? The stress starts to lower that, bring it back into present time. And what I've also found is it helps me to understand what am I really feeling? Why am I looking in the cupboard? Why am I reaching for the cookies? Am I missing my kids? Yes. Do I wish I was doing something else? Sometimes. But the beautiful part, again, is that when we acknowledge it and we thank ourselves for doing, like I accept myself, I understand this. Okay, I'm okay with it. It really calms the ego. And so then one of the things I do, and if you want just right now, just start tapping right here and just see if you can notice a little bit of the amygdala working. And you'll notice like a little shift in the energy and you tap on whatever is going on right now. Like, even if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you can tap on that. But really the emotional eating 
is a really big thing at the holidays that I get a lot of extra clients coming in. They really need help with this. And so then we just kind of thank ourselves like, okay, I accept my feelings. Thank you. Thank you for showing me this. And then I'll say, Terry, remember you eat for nutrition, not for emotional support. And I tap on that one a lot in the shower, especially if I feel like I've been overeating. I'll tell a little story. <laughs> I have been doing a lot of extra studies and working with my shaman teachers and I've just been doing a lot of extra. And so my yoga practice has kind of gone to the wayside. All right. And so last week I said to my daughter, I really need to get on the scale. I feel like I'm just like gained so much weight. I'm afraid to get on the scale. Finally, by Friday, I finally got on the scale and guess what? I hadn't gained any weight. It was just like all in my mind because I hadn't been exercising, but our minds, our mindset can really do a number on us. I was feeling bad. Oh my God, I'm shaming myself. Just like I said, I don't want to shame myself. And so when I started tapping, finally getting on the scale and realizing it was all in my head and I really need to get outside and do some exercise, it was a difference, a huge difference. But sometimes, and without the tapping, you can keep going and going and going and going. So tapping not only works on the emotional part, but it works on our mindset, which is really, really important. Definitely. So if you've been tapping, just stop for a moment. Take a breath, maybe get a drink of water and just notice if you feel a little buzz in your head. It does calm us down. And the best thing is it bring us, brings us back into the present moment. It really does. It brings us back into the present moment. How you feel? Give me a thumbs up, right? Makes a little bit of a shift, definitely. So these are three of the tools that I find to be some of the most helpful for the holidays that were around. So the first one was grounding. Grounding, using the grounding cord, cleaning up your grounding cord, and then coming up and bringing that energy up and then opening up the second chakra because that's where we hold a lot of that emotional energy, sadness, intimate emotions, and then using it in a more physical, productive way. And for me, that's crafting, creative energy. You could also go for a walk or go for a hike. I mean, those are also good things too to help bring you out of the emotions. But I do find that that connection between the second chakra of the emotions and the creativity is one way to really, especially at this time of year, put it into action that can help you really calm down the nervous system. And then the second was the energetic boundaries. And the first one that we used, the one that we used was the bubble. And then have fun. Again, I always say, and I teach that spirit loves amusement. So make it sparkly, make it holiday looking. And when you're at the table, when you're even on a Zoom call, because energy still transfers in the Zoom call, put the bubble around you and protect yourself. Now, there are other, there are other energetic boundaries that I teach, but this one is particularly good when we're in crowds, grocery stores, Thanksgiving table, Christmas table, wherever you may find yourself, right? And then the third one was the tapping. And this is just the beginning because there are tapping points that I teach, but even this much right here gets the energy moving in the direction you want, right? You've probably noticed it like, oh, I need to go on a diet, yet you find yourself at the, <laughs> I find myself at the, at the refrigerator. Once we start tapping, it gets our energy flowing in the direction that we need. And holidays are just known to be overeating times. I mean, sometimes we do it. It's also family traditions, right? We have that. And lots of times families don't feel good until you've eaten a lot, right? I don't know if that's your family, but my family was like, here, take this, here, eat this. Why aren't you eating, right? That kind of thing. And so it becomes a comfort in many cases, right? I know it was very interesting in my last year's, my mother was alive. She had a feeding tube. And so holidays changed. The whole tradition of food changed. And it really made me realize too, like how much is centered around the family dining room table. It was very interesting to see, definitely. Questions, anybody have any questions about it? Okay, you can always post in the comments. I hope that was helpful for you, Vanessa. If you're uh, new to this work, I hope that you can understand that. Let me know if you don't, definitely. So what else do you notice around the holidays? Anything I kind of missed? I think those are some of the big ones that we deal with. And this year, particularly not being able to travel as much as we would like to, although no, I know Samar, you said you were traveling, but many of us can. And then they're even limiting. I have a son in San Francisco and they are so limiting San Francisco, what you could do only like six people or something. 
I don't know how it's going to be where you are. And I know here I am, they're putting more and more restrictions on it every day. And that can be really hard too. For me, that was the one holiday that was mine with my kids. After my divorce, that was my holiday. So it's a, for me, I haven't seen my kids in a year. I have a daughter in Canada. So I can either like be upset and all, or I can find other ways. And that's really what we've been doing is finding other ways and using the tools. These are really important. And the hard part, I think, like you said, Debbie, was just remembering we have them, <laughs> right? Yeah. Remembering they're there for us, right? Yeah. Which is why I do my program that I do, which I have private mentoring program. And so this is part of what I do, but I am offering for you guys an opportunity to work with me. I have four spots left until the end of the year. And so this is just a part of what I do. All right. And as my clients are saying, they're noticing these, they're learning how to be calmer. They're learning how to show up happier. One of my clients just the other day said she has not been this happy in so long. She went through a divorce, had to sell her house, was having to put her beach house up for sale, but she felt so much freer by having the ability to trust her inner guidance, to make this new path. And she's going to go on to actually enrolling back in school, right? After a 20 something year marriage, like really finding that confidence to stand up for herself again. And so even though in some respects, she's like, oh, I'm losing my beach house. It was like, this is so freeing. I feel so much better in my life. And so that's what this program can do for you. Having a spiritual path, learning these tools and working one-on-one -on -one is a great way for you to have the accountability, especially this time of year. I know for myself, this is when I met my spiritual teacher, the very first teacher back in the late nineties, going through that divorce. It was horrible, horrible, horrible. And it gave me the ability to really have someone to help me to really have an accountability person, to find that new path for myself. Really important that we do. So we work in the, the program. I have two 90-day modules that we work with, right? Depending on where you are and what you want to do. And we really learn about the empath energy, about how you process your energy. And then we move into the intuitive tools. So we really want to sharpen those skills so that you know you know what that hell yes is when your intuition comes in. You know how you can trust that. And then you can make decisions for your life and feel really strong about what you're doing, right? And then once you get that and understand that, we learn other energetic boundaries. We learn how to block energy. We learn how to ref reflect energy back. Transference, right? We learn how to open the energy for manifesting. Really important. Right. So those are more energetic boundaries. And then there are other tools, cord cutting, releasing energy, all that kind of thing. They're more energetic tools that we use. Those are only a couple that I showed you today. And then we build the ability to see clairvoyance. Right. So we work with the clairvoyance, the clairaudience, clairessence, clairsentience, because these are the tools that we all have. We just have to train them. And it's just putting that priority into it. Right. And then we work on upgrading your spiritual practice through Reiki, through attuning you. Right. So Debbie, you're a Reiki master, but we really start to work with it on the intuition part, on the place of knowing that. And then perhaps even taking it to that next step. I don't know if you teach. I don't know if this is part of your your path, but then I help many people go on to start that spiritual business using these tools. And then the main part, too, is that mindset. The mindset is so important. That's where we use the Akashic records and tapping. We look at where those imprints came from. What did you come into this lifetime with? What are you carrying? What was triggered? And then we work to clear that out and create that new spiritual con contract for yourself once you have all these tools down. Really important as we move through this, definitely. Because sometimes we come in and we don't know what triggered it. We really don't. And so we keep repeating the patterns over and over, drawing the same circumstances to us, drawing the same relationships to us, staying in lack or or low abundance, right? And so mm -hmm. this helps us to really up level, upgrade our spiritual practice so that we can move forward in life. Really important. And especially right now, so much is changing the consciousness of our planet. Having these tools is more powerful than they've ever been. You probably have seen it, right? Everybody's talking about meditation. Everybody's talking about intuition, Every right? And so it just shows that we all need these skills. I was on the Women's Summit a few weeks ago and the corporate leaders now, right? Many of them I've trained, they're starting to actually talk about it. Whereas before nobody was talking about it, they were doing it, right? But they weren't talking about it. Now people are talking about it. So this is what I do. This is what I teach. And so I'm just offering through showing you a little bit of how I work, the ability to jump on a call with me. I'll put the link in, in, in the chat room, jump on a call with me and see if this program is a fit for you, see if this is something that you would like to do. And I am offering a $500 discount off the program between now and the end of the year. 
I mean, I'm offering the 500 discount between now and Good Friday, Black Friday. That's what I'm talking about. Black Friday, <laughs> not Good Friday. So I'm offering you that discount to jump on. I have four spots left between now and the end of the year. I do fill up, but this is an opportunity to take the action and work with me. So let me know if you have any questions. I would love to chat with you, All right? The call is just a free call. Come on and we'll talk about it and see how it could fit for you and what it is that you need for your own path. Definitely. So the link is in there. And maybe this is the time for you and maybe it's not and that's okay. And if it's not, then fine. Just you can keep following me, check out the podcast. I do a live on Sunday nights where I read cards, talk about the focus for the week and that's fine too. Definitely no pressure. But if you are and you feel like this is something you'd like to do right now, I do find is a great time to do this work, especially as we move into winter. Winter's the time to go deep within. It's the time to do the visioning. It's a time to really work on what it is you'd like to vision and see in your own life as well. Definitely. So if there are any questions, I'll hang out for another couple of minutes, but I thank you guys for showing up. I appreciate it. And if you're listening later, thank you again as well. Definitely use the link and let's chat. Let me know if I can help you in any way. All right. I have a quick question in terms sure. of the the modules. Is it do I have to log in certain days? Is it is it on my own time or are there specific time frames? It's a live one on one. And we could talk about it, Debbie, if you want to jump on the call with me, we could talk about it because in your situation, having Reiki, I think that there's a lot of things I could help you with, but it is a one on one. So we meet each week and then I have an online um, host where, you know, I have all the teachery site where I have all the program materials, the videos, the audios, which you have access to forever. Right. Perfect. But it is, just, yeah. Friday, my daughter is due. So I'll be really busy for a couple of weeks yeah. trying to help them with two toddlers. So yeah. Like well, we do set up a time, time and it is, you know, whatever your time is like, and we could Perfect. do that. But if you want to jump on the call with me and we could talk okay. about it. And I'd love to talk a little bit too about some visions for you, you know, yeah. being that you, you let go of your job and what you see coming forward and being that you've had some <laughs> spiritual training for sure. Yes. Yeah. Great. Definitely. Yeah. Great. Absolutely. Mara, enjoy your visit. Thank you. It's not Lots until hugs. month for Christmas. Yeah. 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 We'll be here for Thanksgiving. Okay. All right. Well, Vanessa, if you have any questions either, let me know. And again, that link I just put in the chat. So let me know. I'll send it out again. You can watch us again and use the tools. Go out there and use the tools. And next week is already. Can you believe it? I mean, right? Is it like one more week? We're starting to Thanksgiving and notice what happens. That's the big deal It's really because it's really a practice. We can talk about this all day long, but really practicing the skills is what's going to make a difference. It really is powerful tools. I've seen amazing shifts with my clients that have worked with me. They've gone on to, I had one client, Andrea, she's like, I'll never get married again. I'll never date again. She had a horrible divorce too. Went on, met somebody. I saw it in the card. She didn't want to hear it. Went on. She also has a stepchild now. She got a raise and a promotion. She has this brand new, beautiful home, happier than she's ever been. She never would have thought it would have happened to her. She was so down and out and just so discouraged with her life, but we can shift. And we can change this. And this is the way to do it. Working with the energy body. That is yep. for sure. Definitely. All right, Thank you guys, you. let's just take a moment. Take a nice deep inhale. And exhale. And just return to that vision for your holidays. See the joy and the peace all around. Maybe a little snowflake here and there. See the glitter shining. Bring in that joy for you, inhaling and exhaling. And just radiate those emotions out through the body, out through those auric fields of joy and peace and love. Good cheer. Make one more deep inhale and exhale. Bringing the awareness back, coming back. All right, to your spirit. Thank Namaste. you. So Thank you. Thank you all. Enjoy the holidays, everyone. Thank you, baby. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Catch the link and give me a call. Bye.